Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a help me for him. We talk about that's the white. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what see what yeah, see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So not only has he got dominion over the animal kingdom, but he has the power to name them. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, it was not found, and helped me for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed the flesh instead thereof. There's the first surgery. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman. And brought her unto the man. The father giving away the bride. That's where that custom is. God's the father. Brings the woman. Presents him before the groom. And Adam said this is now bone of my bones. Flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother. And shall cleave unto his wife. And it shall be one flesh. Husband and wife are one. She becomes from her father's name. She becomes her husband's name. And they were both naked. Now that's one thing I didn't mention last night. Naked. Unclothed. Birthday suit. And this is the first time naked shows up in the Bible. And it has to do with somebody mankind a man and a woman without clothes and then when we go run into the bible we see the same word and we say oh it's not and they were both naked the man and his woman and were not ashamed so we see the foundation of a marriage the very first marriage ordained by god made by god and this is where jesus said what man, I mean, what God has put together, and I'm not quoting completely right, let no man asunder, put it asunder. Now, he's not talking about marriages today. He is definitely not talking about when you quote that to two unsaved individuals. And according to Corinthians, he's definitely not quoting that to a saved and an unsaved individual. God never joined that. God said in his word, you're to find someone who is saved if you're saved. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. We'll pick up right to where we studied in Genesis. We'll run to what Paul says to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Scripture with Scripture. And it's funny because the context, if we were to do the whole chapter, which we're not, is the Lord's Supper. But right now, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 through verse 16. Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even as I am also, even as I also am of Christ. So Paul's saying, look at that, follow me. I'm your example. How interesting for Paul to say that. And he's not boasting, he's not of pride to say, listen, I'm doing right. I'm your example. 
Now I praise you, brethren, saved people, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I have delivered them to you. But I would have you to know, here we go, that the head of every man is Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of the man. And the head of the woman is the man. And we'll see that come in Genesis chapter 3. In the family order it comes Jesus Christ, the husband, the wife. And the head of Christ is God. Above Jesus Christ is God. There's God, Jesus Christ, the man, and then the woman, the wife. You break what the Bible says and you're broken the family. Now we're going to look at scriptures here that will bring us back to the garden. Eve is going to assert her authority over the man. And when you read, I believe it's Timothy, says the woman's not to assert the authority over the man. Well, why not? Because she got us in trouble. And the Bible will tell us that Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. Now, you can be as prejudiced as you think I am. I am not prejudiced. But the Bible does favor man over a woman, especially in the family. And if you don't like it, you'll stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, and you will be wrong when we open the Bible and read the Bible. Every man praying, that's an important thing, praying or prophesying, telling the future, Having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. This would be a veil or long hair in the context of the scripture. But every woman, you say, where are we going with it? You'll find out. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. This is a short or actually bald. You say, well, According to what the scripture said, what if I got cancer and the chemo has made me bald? They got hats. They got wigs. A woman is not to be seen bald. And when you do see if there was a woman, I grew up on television trying to sell some kind of uh, exercise. But that woman was just a monstrosity. Like a man would be today, we're talking, we're talking with my wife, a man wearing some kind of pink. Well, when we grew up, that was a monstrosity. Pink was, was feminine, was female. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be sworn. But if it but if it be a shame for a woman to be sworn or shaven, let her be covered. So purposely shaving a woman's head is allowable. Completely no hair at all. Why a woman would do that, I don't know. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For as much he is the image and glory of God, and we saw that with Adam. Let us make man in our image. Here it is. Body, soul, and spirit. So we're lining up with Genesis chapter 2. He is the image and glory of God. Now, when you say the image of glory of God, when you look upon man, the man had, all the males of this earth and all the males that have ever been, they don't look the same. But we have that body, soul, and spirit. We have that light. We're living. God is living. And when we sin and we die, that's not the image of God. God doesn't die. But the woman is the glory of man. Because we read in Genesis chapter 2 that God put Adam into a deep sleep. And he took his rib and made a woman. Now the woman is not the image of God. She is of the man. Her glory is of husband. They became one flesh, the Bible says. Uh, but the woman is the glory of the man. She's called woman because she was taken from the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. That woman is to help her husband in every way. 
That's what she was made for. She was called, instead of white, she was called a help me. And she don't help me for her husband. A Christian woman that studies the Bible, an unsaved woman who ought to know because the Bible can be bought anywhere and read online, will stand in judgment of ashes or going off in the lake of fire being unsaved. But a wife who marries is to be a help me for her husband. That's what God made her for. Genesis chapter 2. For the man is not of the woman, but the, the woman of the man. And the man is supposed to be due for God. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Now later on when we get to Genesis, we're going to see that the... The fallen angels are going to come down. They're going to look at the women and say, Ooh, you're nice. And the women are going to cohabit with the angels. And they're going to produce those mighty giants that show up for a long time. Something about that long hair attracts the, the angels, the fallen angels, and women to watch themselves. And it'd be great that they have a man that would protect them that is under Jesus, that's under God, that's in the Bible, that is praying that is prophesying so that he can see and protect his wife. Because that's the husband's job is to protect his wife. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. A man needs a woman. He needs a lot of help. There's things that he can't do alone. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. So here's first one. Here's that oneness that Adam spoke about. We are one. She's going to help me and I'm going to help her. God has ordained it to be this way. Without God. because Without God and Jesus Christ creating Adam and mankind. There would have been no need for the wife. Now, God did make man. We know that. He made him out of dirt. He breathed into him. He gave, became a living soul. The wife, as far as it, without God and Jesus Christ, Adam would be still sitting on this planet all by himself. And there would be no population. There would be, well, he would talk to God, but still, there's that intimacy of a husband and wife, a relationship you don't have with God and Jesus Christ. So the man and the wife, the husband and the wife, need each other. For as the woman is of the man, even so the man also by the woman, but all things of God. You put God first. Now it's funny, you run to another chapter in Corinthians, Paul said that a married man has got to go to do what he needs to do to please his wife. A woman who's married needs to do things that will please her husband. You're to put the husband ahead of God. You're to put the wife ahead of God. But you still have your time with God. You can't say, oh God, forget you because you know, I'm married now. Right here. But there will be time and money that you know needs to go to your spouse. Instead of missions. It says, for as a woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. It's got to be always God. And when you got a marriage that there's a saved person and an unsaved person, that's not of God. Violate scripture. Judging yourselves, is it commonly that a woman pray unto God uncovered? How many bald women do you see? And when you, in the times of the Corinthians, there were women who shaved their heads for the temple worship. And the worship of the false gods. Does not even nature itself teach you. Now here's the nature. Here's looking at life all around you. That if a man have long hair. It's a shame unto him. He looks like a woman. He's not to look like a woman. Yeah, but the Bible prescribes for the Jew that it was not long and wild. It was to be a certain length. 
the beard would be pulled. It said that uh, Absalom, at a yearly time, he would pull his hair and then wait a certain amount. It's not crazy hair length, but a man proper would have it no longer than his shoulders, no longer than his ears. Other than that, it looks you're weird and you're violating the Bible. It does not nature nature says does not na even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. It's a shame. Today. There's no shame. Men have long hairs just as much as the women, and they don't realize they're walking around in shame in the eyes of God. You stand before God, and you'll be shamed. God will open up his books, Revelation 20, and say, there it is. You can look it online. You can look it up in the Bible in the dollar store. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory for, to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. The mold of a hair, especially for the woman, is to cover. But if any man seem to be contentious, argumentative, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. So if anybody's going to argue about this hair, there's no custom. You just argue, and we're not going to bring it up in the church. Your argument is with God because he's already said in his words a shame. So back to Genesis chapter 2, where we leave Adam and Eve, the foundation of a marriage by God. It's the oneness. We get into chapter 3, verse 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the serpent. That's the first time serpent shows up. And with Revelation, that serpent is Satan. He's the dragon. He's the devil. Was more subtle than any beast of the field that God made. And that subtleness is, um, he is crafty. Which the Lord God had made. And he, and he said, the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, have God said. Now we're questioning the word of God. Now there's another re remarkable statement here that you got to look at in between the lines. Now I don't know if all animals could do it. But here is a serpent that appears on the scene. And he's talking. And Eve doesn't seem to be like, whoa, wait a minute. What are you doing? She carries a conversation with the serpent. Not questioning, like, what's going on here? And when God makes Balaam's ass talk to Balaam, he never is like, well, wait a minute. I'm carrying a conversation on with, with my ass. It never dawns to him. So I don't know if the fact is, it, I mean, if my dog started talking to me in human language, I hope I would be like, well, this is something wrong. But the animal is talking. And this happens again with an ass. And the Bible says, if you do not redeem an ass, you shall break its neck. And that ass pictures an unsaved man. That's kind of interesting. Because I don't see any other animals besides the serpent and the ass that talk. Yea, yes, positive thinking, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Well, that's not really said. He put a commandment, he put an order of one particular tree. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. In 2.16, the word freely has been omitted the first sin of the Bible is not eating the fruit it is subtracting from the Word of God and when we go to Revelation chapter 22 the very last closing words beside come so Jesus we got a warning about adding and subtracting from the Word of God. 
That's quite interesting. The Satan's out there we whacking in the area. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. So this tree is in the midst of the garden. Now let's go back over here to chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food. The tree of life also is in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Both those trees were in the middle of that garden. And what we read in chapter 2 would look like possibly that those two trees were right there. And that's the case if they're debating over this tree, this one tree, well there's the tree of life. That should have brought tension to Eve. You say, well where is, where is God? He's right there in that tree of life. This tree gives you knowledge of good and evil. Eve doesn't know what evil is. That's an unknown word to her. That would not be in her dictionary. And she's got this serpent talking about evil. Well, there's the tree of life. There's what God said you can have. That's the tree that God says you can't have. So God's testimony is still there with the tree of life, with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If nothing else should have broke her conscience, it should have been, there's the tree of life. You know what God does in Revelation? We're going to keep running to Revelation on this one. You know what he does in Revelation? He removes that tree of knowledge of good and evil. He gives us, I forget how many, I don't even think he says how many trees of life. This says they're on either side of the river. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. I'm trying to hold my Bible here. God has said. Now she's going to try to quote God wrong. Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it. There is adding to the word of God. Least ye die. Now she footnote the Bible. She has changed the word least. Where it said, should have said surely. She has added, subtracted, and replaced a word in the Bible in two verses now the first time Adam speaks he said hey that we, the Bible records this is this is a woman we are now one a man's going to leave his father and mother and they shall be one Eve's first word is Bible correction God thank you for this woman Eve he can't have that tree. The first thing the serpent says, the first thing God says, yea, let there be light. Let there be, that. let there be, let there be. That's God speaking. The serpent speaks up and says, yea, as God said. You know what the size of the Bible that Adam and Eve would have if they had a Bible in their lap? It would be two chapters. And within two chapters, that serpent attacks what, not what God said about creation. He attacks what he said to man. Now, we say, well, what if Adam didn't tell Eve right? That's not recorded. That's information the Holy Spirit said, I'm not going to tell you about. It's not there. We can't put the blame game on Adam as they will start playing the blame game with each other. We know for the fact that she has some idea what God told her and she changes it. A Bible corrector has some idea what the Bible says, but he changes it. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now look what Satan did. He put surely back in. In the wrong context. He added the word not. Now out of Genesis chapter 3, this is the only lie that Satan tells. Everything else is the truth. 
And he lies by adding a three-lettered word. Shall surely not. He shall not surely die. And that N-O-T causes a lie. For God does know that in the day ye thereof, he's got her fascination. He's got her locked on. He doesn't need to say anything else. Then your eyes shall be open. Why are your eyes? Because she's been staring at it. We'll see that in a minute. And ye shall be as gods. Notice that's the first time that word's shown up. And it's shown to mankind. It's written in Psalms. I believe we read it today. And even Jesus said, you are as gods. And it's talking to the man. And it says, you shall die like a man. Gods are men. Because they are made by man. Religion is man-made. Eve and Adam, you can be whatever God you want. You got to know evil. Knowing good and evil. Now that word evil should have struck Eve. Because that's a word that's not in her vocabulary. There's no evil around her. And evil is the result of sin. And the Bible says that God makes evil. And everybody has a problem with that word. No. God will give you your reactions, God will give you the consequence of you sinning. Death is evil because the wages of sin is death. And when the woman saw, so see, your eyes shall be open. The woman saw, got her eyes focused, that the tree was good for food. Now, I don't know how that would have been known. No one's ever tasted it. There are not nutritious labels. Now she saw it was good. That's the lust of the eyes. That's one of the tools of three tools Satan uses. Satan only has three tools in his toolbox. Lust of the eyes. It is good for food. That's the lust of the flesh. That's just as much as having alcohol and drugs for your body. Well, this one is food. It's a bad fruit. It's a wicked fruit. What's wrong with, with marijuana? What's wrong with, with, didn't God make it grow? What's wrong with, with drugs that come? What's wrong with fruit? There's something wrong with this fruit. And God said, don't eat it. That's what's wrong with it. And it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to desire to make one what? And that's the, uh, the pride of life. That's diplomas. Let's look at who I am. Look, look what position I am. Look who me. Pride. You gotta listen to me because I've got the degree. Got, I know it all. And this is one thing you don't want to know. You do not want to know about evilness. You do not want to learn that word. You don't want to live that word. Because that word for that woman will bring the menstrual cycle. Which I understand it's not something easy to go through. They'll give you childbirth. Not guaranteed uh, from what I've seen and heard. That's not very good. Eve, you could have had an unpainful childbirth. Evil would be, I don't know how she got the message, but your son is dead and your other son's the one that killed him. That's evil. The knowledge is when you open up your child's bedroom door and they're in there smoking marijuana. That's the knowledge of evil. When the doctor tells you there's nothing we can do, that's evil. That's the knowledge of evil. Those are words you don't want to know. Knowledge of, uh, of evil is you know what pain is. It would have been better if he just said, no, I don't want it. I'll take the tree of life. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. So, yes, Adam is with her. But she usurped authority over him. He could have he came in and said anything. For whatever reason, he doesn't. 
she bites the apple and said, oh, I can't believe I just said apple. I'm so prone to, what's that? She bites the fruit. We don't know if it's an apple. And hands it over to, to her husband and says, here, this is dinner tonight. Now you would think that moment that she ate that fruit, something would have changed her life right from there. Something would have been real, because they instantly, they're, they're naked. She should have felt something in her like, this is wrong. What I just did, the consequences of sin is wrong. Here, honey, eat it. After all, who wants to sin alone? Gave also her husband with her, and he did eat. The word eat appears 15 times in this chapter. We are in the condition we are today because eat. We are in the condition we are in 2017, especially in America. We are diseased and cancerous because of the food we eat that scientists have changed. We're not eating natural foods anymore. This tree of knowledge of good and evil is not a natural food. It has been tampered with. Our whole painful, worse, sorrowful, tears, death, all the tragedies of men's lives, is because of a three-letter word called eat. That's interesting. And there's a billion dollar market, if not more, for diet pills and a way to lose weight quicker without the hard work. And the eyes of them both were open. Now, were her eyes open before her husband or just by chance they opened together? I don't know. What if Adam never took that fruit? He said, no, 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 no. We are not. We weren't supposed to do that. You're in trouble. But they were open, and they knew that they were naked. So there's that word naked. So what's the first thing? <gasps> so, and they sold fig leaves to get it. So they had to put something. They had nothing on. So if naked is the word naked is, and when Peter's on that boat in the Gospel of John, and it says he was naked, and when it said Isaiah walked naked, I don't know. And they sold fig leaves. They sold. They made the fig leaves with a needle and thread. Here's your first sewing in the Bible. Your first tailor in the Bible. And it's fig leaves. Fig leaves picture self-righteousness. It is ourselves covering ourselves of our sin. And we're going to see later on that this is not what God prescribed. Fig leaves picture self-righteousness together and made themselves aprons they are now ashamed 225 they weren't ashamed now they are aprons and I believe one of the secret society has aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day so here comes God's voice walking He's a spirit. If they did see God in the beginning as a figure, well, since they fall, they're not going to see God as a figure anymore. Sin has, has entered the camp. And Adam and, and his wife hid themselves. This would be the first time. Oh, God. God's coming. Hid. What's the first time the word hid shows up in the Bible? Hiding from God. Isn't that interesting? From the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They are hiding amongst the trees of the tree that got them in trouble. 
So when, when I grew up, any child usually would play hide and seek. One child would go up to a tree, cover his eyes, and start counting. And ready or not, here I come. Interesting. They hide amongst the trees made by God like they're going to be able to hide from God. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said to him, Where art thou? Now God knows. God did not need to ask that question. He wants Adam to step out and say, God, we've got a big trouble here. He wants Adam to confess and get it right. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Proverbs 15, 3. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid. The first afraid in the Bible. It's of God because I've sinned. Being fear of God, the begin the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. There lacks that fear of God today in America. Now this is a good fear because God has done something wrong. I've not admitted it yet, but I've done something wrong. Because I was naked. Was. See this apron? Isn't it a good job that we made, God? And I hid myself. And he, God, said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree which I command thee that thou should not eat? Why is God asking Adam this question? He knows what Adam has done. He knows what Eve has done. He wants Adam to say, Yes, God, I disobeyed you. The man said, The woman whom thou gavest, blaming God, blaming the woman, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Oh, I did eat. Well, that's, that's a confession after the blame. The Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Now, God knows what she did. God knows the entire conversation. He wants her to repent and get right. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. He deceived me. Uh, go back to Genesis 3, 1. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Where's the deceiving of that? The only lie he said, ye shall not surely die. That's the only deceiving part. Eve, you, you, you opened your big mouth. You deceived yourself. You falsely accused the devil. The devil made me do it, Eve said. No, he didn't. He striked up the conversation, but you didn't have to get into it. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art, wait a minute, where's God saying to the serpent, why did, what'd you do? Because God knows full well what Satan and the devil has done. And he's not going to give Satan or the devil an opportunity to repent because he cannot repent and he cannot get right with God. How's that? And yet he does not put him into the lake of fire now. He leaves him being. And that doesn't come into Revelation 19 that the serpent, the, the, the Satan, the devil, the dragon is cast in the lake of fire. God is not going to step in when our troubles happen and relieve them completely. He's given us armor. He's given us a Bible. He's given us prayer. Because thou has done this. Thou art cursed above all cattle. Cattle is one of the things that people worship. And above every beast of the field. Some people will miss church to go hunting. And upon thy belly shalt thou go. And you know what a snake does. He walks 
on his belly with no legs. And the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And two, let's see, two, I see you got that note here. Isaiah 65, 25, I believe it is. The curse is removed off the earth when Jesus comes. The child shall lead the, the bear, the lion, and the jaguar. A, hand shall, a, a little child shall put his hand in the cockatoo's den and not get bit. But it says that he's still going to eat dust. When this world is removed of the curse, the snakes, the serpent, does not get his curse removed. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Well, it can't be one, per one personalized serpent because we wouldn't have animals today walking around on their bellies eating dust unless he's talking to that particular thing of animal, serpents. I will put enmity, complete hatred, between thee, the serpent, and the woman. Eve, and between thy seed, that would be the Antichrist, and her seed, Jesus Christ, now a woman doesn't have a seed. There is the first place, the promise of the virgin birth, because a woman does not have a seed. The man has the seed. It, her seed, Jesus Christ, on Jesus and it, shall bruise thy head and when you look at pictures of the, of the Roman Catholic Church they got one particular picture of Mary with her foot on the head of a serpent now first of all this is not Mary this is Eve second of all they stolen the identity of Jesus Christ and given it to Eve which is wrong and thou the serpent shall bruise his heel with nails so there's a crucifixion there's the virgin birth 315 in Genesis no sooner than man has sinned up pops Jesus Christ the virgin birth and Calvary John 316 or Genesis 316 316 chapter 3 verse 16 are interesting uh, passages in the Bible unto the woman he said God I will greatly greatly multiply th thy sorrow that's the first time that's showing up multiply showed up before was having more animals having baby animals now the multiplication here is sorrow and thy conception being able to give birth. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And well, you know, if you're given pain medication, your children as they grow up will give you sorrow. They'll cause you troubles. Book of Proverbs. And thy desire, that's the first time that word's shown up, shall be to thy husband. Unless it's an act of adultery. But there can be. There's no other man. And he shall rule over thee. Now that last time we saw the word rule, it was the sun move over there day and night. They had complete authority. The sun has authority over the day. The moon has the authority over the night. <coughs> Excuse me. The husband has complete authority over his wife. And God will hold the husband accountable for what his wife does. One of the things that's spoken about in the law, as far as a woman, whether her husband or her father, if she makes a vow, and the husband says, no, I'm not going to allow that, God. God says, okay, fine. Or she makes a vow and says, okay, that sounds good, go ahead. When Hannah tells her husband, I'm not going to bring Samuel. I'm going to wean him first. Then I'll bring him to the temple. Okay, that sounds good. I approve of that. Ahaz 
never even found out what Jezebel did to get that herb garden. And God charged her with the murder. Husbands will be held accountable. The Bible says that Paul writes, I believe again, it's Timothy, that if a wife has a question, she should ask her husband. Husband has a lot laid on him. And on to Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Now listen, this is not always listen to your wife is wrong. Had Herod listened to his wife, things would probably worked out a whole much better. I think Boaz, many of his life, I think if you, I'm not saying, I, I think, Pilate, who did I say? Yeah. Well, Pilate. I think as much as Ruth was the character was, I think Boaz would probably listen to his wife many a time. Um, I can't think of her name now. Yeah. Esther. Yeah, with Ruth, with Boaz. Esther. Her husband listened to her, and it was found out about what Haman had in, had an idea. The Bible says, I mean, here, Adam listened to his wife for wrong. But a wife has think, good things to say, and you better adhere to it. Has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying. Now, it's kind of funny, because he didn't say to the woman, you've eaten that tree. He just says, sorrow childbirth, your husband shall rule over it. But when he comes to Adam, has hearkened unto the voice of wife and has eaten the tree. Adam should have said something. And since he didn't, God says, okay, it's your fault, buddy. But the Bible says that, that Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. You say, well, you just said that the serpent didn't deceive her. No, she deceived herself. The biggest deceiver that this world has is mankind. We get them come to our doors every so often with their deceiving literature. That they got millions and billions of people in their organization. And they've got African Americans in their organization. They don't even know what that organization said about the colored man. They're deceived. Paul warns us. Jesus warns us. John warns us of deceivers. And it's not necessary Satan. We've got three. God, Satan, and man. And man can act independently without God or without Satan and still do harm. He might do it to get to the top of the corporation ladder. He might do it to get rich with on beyond, beyond shadow of deep. Proverbs. That thou has eaten the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Repeat what God said. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. It's your fault, Adam. It's Adam's fault we got weeds and need pesticides and fertilizer. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. And farming is going. And with that will go the food. Thorns upon the crown of brow of Jesus Christ. Upon his head. Also and thistles, this weeds, shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Still, vegetarian diet. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. That's the first time sweat shows up. Comes as far as work. Till thou return to the ground. Adam never heard that before. For out of it was thou taken. Adam knew that. For the dust thou art. Genesis 2. And unto the dust shalt thou return. There's death. You're going to die. The wages of sin is death. That dust is funny because he says it to the serpent. And thou shalt go and dust shalt thou eat. Man is dust. 
And Adam called his wife's name Eve, not God. Genesis 5 will see that he called her name Adam. Because she was the mother of all living. That's kind of funny because guess what? There's been no children yet. Adam's doing a little prophesying. Adam's a prophet. He was a king too. But he's not a priest because he doesn't bring any offering to God recorded in the Bible. David is a prophet, king, and priest. David got to eat of the showbread that was not liable for anybody to eat. He was a king of Israel. And boy, did he prophesy. Unto Adam, also to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin. This would be the first death in the Bible. It would be an animal. Scripture with scripture would be a lamb. And clothe them. So God would say, take off those fig leaves. And put this on. I'm not taking those fig leaves. I am not going to take Cain's offering before Cain even tried to offer. Now you got to know somewhere Cain would have been told, well, God did not like those fig leaves, Cain. He killed an animal. And we had to watch. As Israel watched on Jesus being killed by God. We're back to Calvary. The Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. The bloody sacrifice. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man, there's no other man, is become as one of us. Uh, that's what Satan said. Um, he shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. God knew about hell because Jesus said hell was prepared for Satan and his angels. Adam and Eve never knew what hell was until whenever he's going to tell them. God knew about death. God knew about the consequences. Adam and Eve did not know. Now they know. Behold, man has become as one of us. Us, the Trinity. There it is again. To know good and evil. Now you know. As far as we can see, the next bad news they're going to get would be, your son's been killed. Eve, congratulations. You know what evil is now. Eve, you're shedding all those tears for that lost boy. He's not ever coming to come back. He's dead. Was it worth it? Satan told you, you know evil. There you go. And now, at least he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now that would be a monstrosity if Adam, to be a sinner, to walk over and take that tree and live forever as a sinner. I don't know how God would punish a forever living sinner. You imagine what this world would be like if Adam and Eve and all the people in the Bible never died and are still living today, 2017. Still hating everybody. Still trying to, I don't know, they tried to kill if he couldn't kill anybody. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till. Now that garden work is work. Before it said dress the garden. Now till. you got to break up that ground with sweat. you got to put those animals to hard labor. Till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. Get out of here. But Lord, I want to stay. Get out of here. Oh God, please forget. Get out. Now. And I am not kidding. He drove him out. Adam and Eve were not. Probably sat there pleading to God. Please give us one more chance. He drove out the man. Get out of here. And he, God, placed at the east of the Garden of Eden, cherubim, and a flaming sword, rotary, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. 
He drives man from west to east. And it looks like he puts his sword up, so it looks like Adam and Eve are trying to get back in or something, or think about going back, and not to give any man any opportunity. Now that all men are sinners, you ain't going to go get that tree of life. Absolutely not. But when we run over to Revelation chapter 22, and sin is all gone, and those sinners are cast off in a lake of fire that did not trust, did not believe on God, and those who believed on Jesus Christ, those Jews that believed on Jesus, who had done what they have done, and their names are in the Lamb's book of life. There's those tree of life again. In New Jerusalem. In the eyes of God. When you when they partake of the fruit and the leaves, they're going to do it in the eyes of God. You see, back in Genesis 3, God wasn't there watching the trees. Well, he was. Adam and Eve didn't know it. Now, he'll keep his eye on them. 